This is a message by Apostle Joshua Selman. Before we sit tonight, I want to speak over your life and then I also want us to pray. Everything that makes yesterday look better than today, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I curse it right now. I'm not speaking to everyone, I'm only speaking to someone who has the faith to believe. Whatever has made your yesterday better than your today, that you only keep making reference to yesterday, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare that that tragedy lives your life forever. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now, with every faith you've got in your heart, shout this after me. Say, Father, I decree and I declare that from today, I go from glory to glory. Open your mouth and begin to pray. One minute. I decree. It's a declaration by the Spirit that I go from glory to glory. The path of the justice as a shining light it shines ever brighter. Oasis, are you praying? All the overflows, make sure you are praying. Sheba kaparaka doskete brenda gata brenda gata. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. In every area of my life, glory to glory. Glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Glory to glory. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I contact the grace that takes me from glory to glory. I contact the anointing, the unction that causes me to go from glory to glory. Never a better yesterday. Never a better yesterday. Never a better yesterday. One more minute, you are still praying. Never a better yesterday. By the power of the Holy Ghost, from glory to glory, new every morning, testimonies every day, breakthrough every day, the goodness of God working in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Every declaration you make you see, your words are your participation as far as your destiny is concerned. When you keep quiet, your silence is a license to the realm of the spirit that any spirit can replace you and speak. That means that if you keep quiet, it is safe to assume that you are not interested in a great destiny. And with respect to your silence, it will be right. But as for me, I will not be silent. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can I give you one more prayer before you sit down? Say, Father. The anointing, the grace, the unction for the next season of my destiny. Let it rest upon me. Open your mouth and pray. The grace. There is a grace for every season. There is an unction for every season. It's not enough to know you are stepping into a new season. You must cry for the grace. Cry for the unction. Cry for the anointing. Allocated for the next season. The anointing, the grace are located for the next season. Someone pray. A serious believer pray. A determined believer pray. The anointing for the next season of my life. The anointing for the next season of exploits in the spirit. I receive, I receive by faith. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we ask and we cry tonight that you will speak to us yet again. Let your word come with power. Let it transform us forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please sit down. May God bless you. Pastor, now thank you again. Pastor Nat, can I borrow you for one minute? I just sense in my heart. Don't mind me when I'm on stage with your pastor. Just allow us to do our thing on stage. I, I'm just sensing that song. Waiting, waiting.
to, to see. Let me just sing it one more time and then I will teach. Daily I am. Amen. I'd like you to just listen with faith. He's ministering to your spirit. Hallelujah. One thing I desire of the Lord is that I will dwell in his temple to behold the beauty of his presence. That I may seek your face and pray Give you pleasure all the days of my I truly believe that this song is already a prophetic ministration for you. The Bible says, they that wait. Waiting always looks like a waste of time until the results begin to show. Hallelujah. You know that when a seed is put in the ground, for a long time it is silent and it looks like there is no activity. And sometimes the farmer can even be frustrated. You would think that because the soil were good and the seed were good, it will produce the next day. In the silence of that soil and that seed, something is happening that you may not see. For someone, you've been investing time in God's presence. I don't know why God is starting like this. This is not for everyone, but it's a prophetic word for someone. You are in a season of your life where honestly, you cannot even define what you are doing. You can't tell whether you are confused. You can't tell whether you are moving forward. You don't even know if it's an attack. It's a season where you are waiting. You are waiting because you've been planted. Give God time to build you. Give God time to build you. Slowly but surely, line upon line, precept upon precept, you will see that you begin to emerge until you become a giant oak tree. I'm speaking to someone because you are in a season where it looks like nothing is happening. And I'm coming to you by the spirit of the living God tonight. It pays to wait. That's why I asked Pastor Nat, I just had that song in my spirit. It may not be for everybody, from the hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait living in the silence of god is very painful but you must know that the silence of god is also a language when god is silent he's saying something when god is silent what he's saying is keep the training on when god is silent he means i'm carrying you on the wings of the spirit you don't need to understand what i'm doing when god is silent it means i'm teaching you faith he says, count it all joy when you go through diverse tribulations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and that you allow patience to have its full cause so that you will be matured entire, lacking nothing. I don't know why God decided to take it like this, because someone has been crying, saying, Lord, I have how long? I have prayed, I have fasted, I have prayed, I have fasted. While other people were jumping in the course of the conference, you've just been silent. God, speak to me. Here is your word. I want you to know it's not an attack. You are in a season where you are living in the silence of God. You are planted. Give God time and be patient with your destiny. It will look like others have gone ahead of you, but in the business of of destiny you see you don't compare yourself with someone who has gone because when God is done with you sometimes in one day he can bring 10 years in your life and so for that person we decree and declare the grace to wait the grace to wait even when you don't understand what God is doing the grace to not be distracted may that grace rest upon you now in Jesus name we pray Tonight, very briefly, I want to share with you a very powerful secret. What you will be learning tonight is the reason why some people never go down. I want to show you a secret of longevity of impact. Behind, thank you, thank you. Let's honor the worship team. Behind the extraordinary exploits of people in the kingdom are secrets nobody rises in this kingdom and nobody thrives in this kingdom commanding consistent results by luck or in ignorance please listen very carefully 
what you are about to learn today is the secret by the message of God that will insist that you will never have a better yesterday are we together now and so I want you to lend me your attention and please as we call for prayer in the course of the teaching I like you to participate maximally I saw people outside their overflows and those following online distance is no barrier when it's time to pray pray when it's time to listen you listen hallelujah the difference between hearing and listening is that one happens automatically the other one has intention connected to it when you hear provided your ear is working it doesn't matter whether you are interested or not once there is sound you must hear but listening means that your attention has been invested for the purpose of growth so don't just hear tonight listen are we together now i'm teaching on the path to greater glory the path to greater glory haggai chapter 2 verse 9 the path to greater glory I want to show you by the word of God the secret that transits men from glory to glory stepping into a realm of that glory that excels the Bible says the glory I'm reading it but this is a prophetic word for someone the glory of this latter house it says shall be greater than the former saith the Lord and in this place will I give peace saith the Lord you believe that say amen, amen. Now, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says that the path of the just, very simple but profound scripture, that the path of the just is as a shining light and that that light shines more and more. Please say after me, more and more. more. One more time, say more and more. more. So that your path is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day it means that in the economy of God a man is never I repeat again supposed to have a better yesterday it should never be that your life is so full of darkness that you only have to look back to find hope and to rejoice because everything before you seems dark and bleak God designed and he desires that we go from one exploit to another we go from one level of glory to another if you believe that say amen. amen in job chapter 8 and verse 7 job chapter 8 and verse 7 the bible says though thy beginning was small it says yet thy latter end should it didn't say would your latter end based on God's laws should greatly increase there's nothing wrong with starting small but remaining small is against God's design for your destiny are we together now though thy beginning were small ministerially financially family wise in your job and your career it says there is prophecy there is a, a prophetic declaration a verdict over your life already that the latter end should greatly increase by this scripture I speak to someone who has remained small for an unusual time you see when you give birth to a baby it's unfair to expect that baby to start walking start talking start jumping no you give the baby an allowance of time but after five to six years and the child cannot talk the child cannot walk it now becomes a health issue am i right on that some of you have compassed this mountain long enough by prophecy we push you to the next season in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ haggai chapter 2 we read that earlier but let's read verse 3 now and then we'll go to verse 9 haggai chapter 2 it says who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory it says and how do you see it now is it not in your eyes in comparison as though it's nothing in fact niv or so any of the newer versions will give a, a better perspective of it he said who of you is left that saw this house in its former glory how does it look to you now he said does it not seem to you like nothing he's contrasting now that with respect to what you now see he was speaking prophet Haggai that this is pale and weak and diminished with respect to what was there before it's an anomaly and so verse 9 says that the glory of this latter house that means that thing has to be corrected the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former and in this place I will give peace listen to me 
more and more is the heritage of every believer in Christ not just a few people you have to believe this I heard pastor not just recapping on what pastor Poju taught you you see it's important that you frame I was so blessed when you know we're being led through the confession of faith it's very powerful the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so say so not wish so not hope so let the redeemed of the Lord say so it matters what you believe it matters the frame of your mindset I always teach that your mindset is your contribution to your failure or your success your contribution to your becoming successful or your failing is your mindset a summation of what you have chosen to believe are we together it's important for you to believe that the more and more is your destiny in Christ and don't allow anybody don't allow any strange philosophy preach you against that understanding God is not against your rising God is not against your shining God is not against your becoming he's not against your excelling if you do not believe this you will not open up your heart to receive that which makes your destiny more and more are we together now have this at the back of your mind that an enviable destiny a great destiny is my heritage in Christ it says thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side are we together now Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 it says I will make you exceeding fruitful I will make you exceeding fruitful I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of your loins Genesis chapter 12 2 and 3 speaking about Abraham I will bless him that bless you and him that curses you will I curse he says thou shalt be a blessing in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed why does God desire that we continue to scale heights in destiny John 15 and verse 8 he said herein is our father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples it is important for you to appreciate the fact that if you truly want to see God glorified in the world of men, it happens at the instance of the results that come from your life. John chapter 15, same John and verse 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto good works. Unto good works. Unto good works. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. God is glorified when you excel. God is glorified when you excel. Are you listening now? God is glorified when you excel spiritually, financially. He says, let your light. He's called you the salt of the earth. Remember Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, the Bible says. But if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, it says, where we shall it be salted again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown down and trampled on the foot of men then it says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot regardless what sentiments cannot be hindered cannot be hidden it says neither do men light their candle and put it under a bushel but they put it on a candlestick and it gives light to everyone who is in the room verse 16 now says let your light so shine before before that they may see your good deeds God wants men to see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven Galatians 1 24 simple but profound scripture and they glorified God in me God can be glorified in a man God can be glorified through a man I pray for you because of the results your life will begin to command someone will stand and call upon the name of Jehovah that someone who did not believe that God lived when they look at your life as a living epistle your life will be a sermon to them that God is still in the business of lifting in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible calls us living epistles living epistles many of you have heard me teach this a living epistle means that you should be the continuation of everyone's Bible study 
that when people see you it's like the, their bible just opened again and they continue from where they stopped in their room your life should be sermons literally like a recording in motion preaching the faithfulness of god preaching the restoring power preaching the preserving power every day somebody should learn god from your life every day somebody should learn god from your result are we together now you should never wake up in the morning and go back to bed without your life preaching and i've told you that results are evangelists results can preach there is an audience that listens to that evangelist called results everything stopping you from producing results honestly i came tonight from the depth of my spirit i decree and declare it must live your life now in the name of jesus christ so god is interested in our bearing fruit god is interested in our consistency now listen he's interested in our consistency the tragedy about life and even among the faith people is that many people start they start well they start excellently they start gloriously but it looks like only a handful of people remain jesus said ye who have continued with me not just those who started with me with all due respect there are people who have started ministry started excellently started gloriously started with vibrancy today with all due respect some of them are not nowhere to be found there are people who started business same thing when your yesterday looks better than your today it's an attack it's an attack are we together now i want to share with you very quickly a few keys i have found this from scripture I have found this from studying the lives of fathers and people who have remained. I've studied people who have been in ministry and in business and have succeeded for at least 40 years. At least 40 years. And I've been able to distill a few keys that are responsible for sustainable glory. Not balloon success. Not that you are up today and just before people are done clapping, you are down and then you vanish. Let me pray for someone already. Whatever gives you epileptic results that you celebrate today, you rejoice today and then something mysterious happens and brings you down. Going back to yesterday, going back to your former self, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, you are delivered from that circle. That circle of aborted success, that circle of short-lived success, I cost it from your life forever. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. We are gathered today by the message of God as a testament of consistency. 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 Results are impactful not just when they are produced, when they are sustained. When results are not sustained, they do not create the kingdom impression that they should. So I want to share with you these keys and I want you to please listen. Number one, the first key that is responsible for greater glory, glory to glory, ever increasing glory that you become and you remain. You are at the epicenter of kingdom relevance without fading. Isn't it amazing how the sun is? That the sun is older than every one of us and it's not as much as we know it's not depleted in its intensity and glory while men pale and fade i've seen people who sometimes can be 25 30 and then they look 50 and you are asking them what happened they tell you life happened to me i wasn't always like this and yet the sun with all the wars and everything that happened on earth the sun remains unchanged in its intensity that looks like someone's destiny after today yeah. in the name of jesus that no matter what happens your result will remain consistent yeah. number one the first key that i present for you tonight and i want you to listen very carefully it is a very subtle but a very deep and serious mystery Many people started by engaging this mystery, but they stopped somewhere along the way and they found out that their glory began to fade. Are we together? The first key that controls greater glory is greater yieldedness, brokenness, and surrender. 
you want to see greater yieldedness there must also be greater i mean greater glory there must be greater yieldedness brokenness and surrender i can tell you the deeper your consecration the higher your flight in destiny let me say that again the deeper your consecration the higher your flight in destiny is someone learning now there are many 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 people who walk in keeping with brokenness and yieldedness and when God began to lift them they became distracted by all of the success and I tell you by experience and I tell you from the privilege of mentorship that success is a noisemaker even if you don't speak it will speak it has such a deceptive way of distracting you and if you lose your consecration and you lose your yieldedness then it's like a fan with no power it may seem to rotate but it's, on, it's only rotating to stop eventually are we together now the greater your yieldedness the greater your brokenness the greater your surrender the greater the glory that is revealed through life second timothy chapter 2 20 and 21 second timothy chapter 2 20 and 21 20 and 21 220 help us media 2 and 20 not 2 and verse 2 thank you it says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver there are others vessels of wood and earth now notice all of those vessels the difference is the material the difference is the level of endurance. The difference is the level of glory that can be emanated from these vessels. It says some are vessels of gold and silver, others wood and earth. Now, it says some vessels by their design and by their alignment are unto honor. Some are unto dishonor. The key is in verse 21. It says, if a man, that means it's a personal responsibility. You can transit from a vessel of clay and wood and silver till you become a vessel of gold. Are we together now? If a man will purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 4, Amplified. We're discussing the first key. Greater yieldedness, greater brokenness, and greater surrender. The Bible says, take away the dross from the silver, and there comes out pure metal for a vessel for the silversmith to shape. Take away the dross. If the dross is still within the metal, it will not bring the shape that is desired. Let me tell you this. Please look at me. We live in a world today where there is such an obsession to be celebrated. There is such an obsession to be an influencer, to be a celebrity. And it's a very human thing and it's a very sincere thing. Are we together now? Especially the young people. I mean, there's such an obsession to be known. How many likes, how many follows, how many shares. But you see, we stand the risk of losing out on this key that sustains glory when your obsession for fame your obsession for power your obsession to be known your obsession to be recognized becomes greater than your obsession for his presence you are in trouble immediately the devil does not have to attack you you are already in trouble are we together now yes so for many many believers they start with God the depth of their prayer life, fasting, the word, consecration, worship. They can lock themselves and cry their heart. Search my heart like the psalmist who say, try my thoughts. If there is any evil way in me, he said, lead me to the way everlasting. But you see, sometimes fame has a very deceptive way of making the presence of God look like a burden to you. Why do I need to visit his presence again? Whether I study or not, I still have something to preach. And you see, the thing about grace is that it doesn't matter what you do. Sometimes you will be surprised how God will defend you in the public. And it will convince you that because the plate is broken and still carrying food, it means you should not do anything about it. Even when a plate is broken, it can still carry food, but not for long. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. I have a covenant with God that anything ministerial or otherwise 
that would distract me away from his presence i like i rather cancel every ministration for that year i rather lock up koinonia for that year let me be a failure before men and maintain my stance with god i consider myself a success don't clap if you don't believe what i'm saying no are we together it's true the presence of god that is where the glory of god resides you see this imputation of glory is um, I'm, I'm trying to look for a very modest uh, non-offensive word but the, the greatest way to relate it is 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 literally um it's like marinating it's like marinating your protein your meat you know how you soak in whatever it is the sauce that you prepare and you just leave it and there's an infusion you see that now everything that meat carries what was outside it this is what happens in the glory you don't give god five minutes and carry glory you don't give god you don't give anything five minutes and carry glory not even the devil are we together now time is a currency that everybody uses to purchase whatever you want time time and many people waste that time listen the first key that i'm bringing for you if you're in ministry here listen to me minimize the obsession to be known to be heard stay in his presence your greatest publicity is your secret place not posters not billboards are we together now one song that can come one sermon that can come one idea that can come and this includes even business people don't say i'm a businessman thank god i'm not a pastor you should even stay more are we together now yeah. brokenness search my heart that you return back to god and you say father your boy is back again after the world claps for you you can get down your knees and say lord i'm still on my knees after 30 years i'm still on my knees i'm not coming to you as apostle i'm coming to you as that boy you found that you helped and god says because you have done this let's go into the next level you see that's why you find out that there are people just when you think you have exhausted them another weight of glory comes upon them that business you see does not happen on stage it happens in the secret are we together by this some of you need to return after this conference you should just extend it to a retreat and go back and say lord i'm sorry you are the lover of my soul but i left you in search for fame i left you looking for what only your presence can give me only your presence can give me um, i rather not be known by men and let me be known by him you see God is not a herbalist. So, you know, sometimes people come to me and say, Apostle, I want power. This is my own. This is the only thing missing. I have revelation. I want power. And I tell the person, you are, you are playing. You are really playing. So you think that all that will just give you power is just a jar of oil. No, sir. No. Your heart can perforate a vessel that carries oil. Your heart condition. It doesn't matter what oil comes upon you. Your heart condition can drain away and waste away impartations. Are we together? As God lifts me in ministry and as I grow in ministry, I'm not hasty to lay hands on people again. Because I've been wasting oil. Wasting oil on hearts that are not yielded. The head is ready. But the heart is not ready he said my son give me your heart not your head give me your heart he says and then let your eyes incline to my ways hallelujah i love the lord oh please join me and love the lord love him more than ministry love him more than titles love him more than fame are we together love him more than mo how do you know you love him by doing the things that please him he that love me is he that obeys my commands and he says i will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him john 4 14 21 he that keepeth my commands he it is that loveth me he says and i will love him john chapter 14 verse 21 14 21 hallelujah he says, I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I can share with you here encounters that came from the presence of God. Ideas today that have accelerated me in life and ministry by the mercies of God. There was no other way I would have gotten those ideas except in his presence. No other way. No other way. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. The world is getting to a point where we are exalting intelligence and intellect above and beyond his presence. And as much as I appreciate intellect, I, I appreciate knowledge and education, let me tell you, there is an ancient secret our generation is losing. His presence. His presence. There are things that cannot be bought in the market. There are things that cannot be found in a library. There are things that cannot be stored in the bank. They are not even sold on earth. Only his presence. Greatness is not sold any other place. You can't find it anywhere. You find it in his presence. I'm praying for someone. I don't know what has affected your passion for God. Let's start from there. You've been receiving other things, but something has dried your secret place. Something has dried your hunger for God. Something has dried your zeal for God. There's an obsession to be known. All you are interested in is, who knows me all? Let me have some money. Don't get me wrong. God wants you to have all the money and have all of that. But any money that you have to leave God to get is a demonic money that sends you to hell. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I know you want to make it. I know you desire to be great. And truly, God desires to make great. But let me tell you, the secret to being known by the world is to know him. To know him and to stay there until he builds you. To stay there until he prunes you. Are we together now? It's men that will call you MOG. God will not call you MOG. Uh -uh. No. When you are in his presence, you are not there as a man of God holding a conference. When I'm before him, I don't go as Apostle Joshua Selman. He doesn't call me Apostle. No. God, such this my frail heart. Who knows whether pride just let, crept its way there as men were clapping. The frailty of men. You know this is our celebrity madness. Check it, oh God. Don't mind what I'm wearing. Don't mind what people are saying. Don't mind the posters. Search my heart. And if you find anything that can destroy me, kill it. Let, let me cry the cry in the secret first. It is better than crying it in the open. There is no shame in his presence. And let me tell you this. One way you know you have met him is that there will be there will always be something to adjust if you step into his presence and leave with nothing to change you met a familiar spirit if it is the god of the bible i assure you this is not about being good or bad this is about going from glory to glory to drain that dross now let me tell you how god builds people i hope i'm not wasting your time god does not prune everything at once it will be too heavy for you so when you are walking with God, it's level by level. There are things God will prune and leave others. Others will observe that weakness, but God will keep quiet. He's not endorsing it. You don't have the strength to go through that circumcision yet. He will allow you to be encouraged by results first. When you are ready to dig deeper, he will say, now come. There is an issue you always had. I kept quiet, but it doesn't mean the level you are about to enter now that level of pride even though people have said it and you've seen my power in spite of it but this thousand cubits you can't carry this one again there is another kind of purification are we learning now god never tries to remove everything at once you can't bear it it is level by level so when a measure of circumcision happens he gives you an opportunity to experience the glory that comes by your yieldedness so that next time no matter how painful you will be consoled that i yielded yesterday and i saw the benefits are we together now because when god just does it will be too heavy and you may not understand it for 10 years god can keep quiet over an issue it doesn't mean he's silent keep growing one day he will come and he will say, son, empty your account. He said, no, I cast that spirit. It can't be God. 
can't be God. I reject that spirit. And God who says that by this test, it leads me to the next phase. I don't need your money. I'm only showing you what is sitting at the core of your heart. So every time you tell me be lifted, the reason why it does not make sense is because it's not me you are speaking to. You are speaking to an idol that has been quietly lying down there. And then the day you die, sometimes you would think that if you just tell God, okay, I will give it. He will say, okay, don't worry like he did to Abraham. For you, you will really do the transfer and it will go. And then you would think a breakthrough will come by the next day to show it was God you obeyed. For that one year, you will be surprised. You will walk around Lagos as if somebody who lost his identity. And yet, you are in the will of God. As confused as you are, you are still in the will of God. You see, faith is not always about obtaining things. Faith is about a process that builds your trust in God beyond things. If the object of your, of your being manifesting faith is just the promise, the promise can be an idol. Are we together now? So the journey of faith should lead you to a point where you build trust in God. It's called a good report. It's a testimonial of faithfulness. That you get to a point where although you want to obtain, in Hebrews 11, not everyone obtained the promise, but all of them obtained good reports. Are we learning now? I desire him. It is truly my desire that nothing will ever take his presence and ever take his place. And I'm calling on someone to join me in that declaration of desperation. When it has to do with the business of God, you should not be ashamed. My brother and my sister, we live in a world where when people see your hunger for God, sometimes they're mistaking it for fanatism. I'm not talking about, there are many fanatics who don't love God. It's just the motions of spirituality. Love has an energy. You can feel, when you see love as you know. You are everything. Thank God for the things you have given me. But you are everything. Thank God for the platforms and everything you have given me. But you are everything someone join me prophesy that he's everything you are everything you are everything you are not just greater than money you are everything you are not greater than my certificate you are everything they don't come close to you you are in a class in my life all by yourself someone in one minute turn it into prayer let open up your heart and cry to the Lord search my heart let there be a circumcision tonight take away pride take away lust take away flesh everything that can destroy my tomorrow take it away go ahead and pray just one minute you are praying you are the thirst. Are you praying? You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. Are everything. Someone is praying, Lord, let's start afresh again. Something has happened to me. This is not how I was with you. Something has distracted me. A man came into my life and took your place. A woman came into my life and took your place. A job came into my life and took your place. Lifting came into my life and took your place. Let there be a restoration. Someone is praying. Cry to your maker. Take your place, oh God. Let us begin again. Afresh. That hunger. Afresh. That passion. Afresh. Greater than ministry. Greater than business. 
greater than fame, greater than the desire to be known. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. Oh, there's no one like him. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and I found that I would But on that, I remember the Lord speaking to me, and, and you have you know very great experiences like this years ago. He said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. This thing, ba, there is an equation to success that only God can complete. It is not, I know that success works based on principles, and I don't mean to insult everything you know. Diligence, relationships, value, productivity, but there is a part of the equation to greatness that nobody knows what answer to put there. It's only God. If you can explain how you became great completely, then God did not make you great. There must be a part of that equation. Even you, you will know that this one was the finger of God. I'm taking a minute to press on this. If this is where we stop tonight, God gave me an assignment. Tonight is a night of circumcision. There are many apostles that should have risen, but your, your, your bankruptcy of the secret place in search for power, in search for fame. There are many business people today. By God's program, you should be handling the wealth of nations. But your heart wants to, your hand wants to receive it, but your heart is not ready. That circumcision has not happened. Those that he loves, he chastises. There are some of you, let me tell you the truth. Your remaining at the same level is not an attack. It's the mercy of God. You have been weighed. And God has seen that if another measure of glory comes to you without this circumcision, you will become a casualty to yourself and to everybody. And so God will limit you. As a man of God, there are certain levels of anointing. You will never be able to step. You may fast. You may pray. But until that, something must die for you to press in to the deeper dimensions of God. This is not a popular sermon in the body of Christ again. You know why? Because many, many people think that just because God is gracious, is loving, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They are rewards, they are testaments of endurance, testaments of staying to be planted until you are made. Ah, grace is resting on someone. For someone, God is saying, I've been looking for you. Finally, I've been searching for you to empower you. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. I have come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you. I'm thirsty for you. I have come to the waters to drink. Help me, Pastor Nat. I'm free and not let you go. Come feel. Sweet Holy Spirit, Spirit. That's what is happening Spirit. to someone. Sweet a renewed Holy relationship Spirit. with the Holy Ghost. Getting back to the place of power. Getting back to the place of consecration. Getting back to the place of His presence. More than before. I'm hungry for you. 
I am I've come to the table to eat. God is restoring hunger. I'm thirsty for restoring you. hunger for his I'm presence. I'm thirsty for hunger you. for the secret place. I've come to the waters to drink. Sweet Holy Spirit, help me so Jesus, Jesus, much more than before. Listen, listen to me. Oasis, believers, hear me. There is a depth in God. Please hear me, ministers of the gospel. There is a depth in God. When you touch that depth in God, you will become a sign and a wonder. It's, it doesn't matter who likes you or doesn't like you. It doesn't matter your lonely. This is not about human connection. Listen, there are, there are certain levels of seriousness that if you give as an investment, I tell you this, God will make a vow with his integrity that you will never look for certain things again. The price for those things would have been paid in the secret. I'm telling you, there are people like that. By reason of something they touch in God, God will vow that they will never be in a position of need. If it means to raise someone from sleep and say, bless this person, their lives look magical. It's not magic. It's a testament of that glory. The Bible says, even among the stars, one different from another in glory. What is God doing in your life tonight? It's a circumcision. My dear sister, my dear brother, anybody who runs away from the chastisement of the spirit has taunted themselves. I show you the way of power. Many fast, oh, Pastor Nat, many pray, but the problem is their heart. What gives power to your prayer and fasting is not the motion. It's the sincerity of your heart. Hallelujah. It is one thing that I love about your pastor. I truly know his heart trembles before God. Trembles before God. Show me a man who looks like a failure by any definition. And the only thing he has is the fear of God with sincerity. I show you a man who is a sign and a wonder about to happen. Hallelujah. He sought God in the days of Zechariah. And for as long as he sought the Lord, 2 Chronicles 26, 5, the Lord made him to prosper. My dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. I know you need money. God wants you to have more money than you want to have. I know you need a job. I know you need fame. I know you need a child. For the next one minute before I touch, wherever I can stop. But I'm going to ask us to cry before the Lord. It's a cry of repentance. That everything that has become an idol, an idol, call it by name and nail it at the cross tonight. Call it by name and nail it at the cross tonight. Call it by name. Lord, I repent. I repent. Repentance is not for unbelievers. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you. Repentance means to realign. Realign. The glory of the moon comes by its alignment to the sun. To the degree to which the moon aligns to the sun. That is the degree to which it shines. Can you take a minute and cry before God? Cry before your maker. Let me join you in that cry. This is not about a man of God now. This is between you and your maker. Lord, I'm, I'm come. Some of you are like prodigal children returning back. Turning back. Lord, let's start afresh again. I do not condemn you. God does not condemn you. But I show you a way of power. Oh. oh, oh. minute. 
it you're crying before your maker oh, 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 oh. Someone is praying, Father, restore my prayer life. I can't, I can't lie to you in this conference. Something is wrong. Restore my prayer life. Restore my passion for the word. For someone you may need to pray. Restore my consecration. Restore, restore, restore. The oil for the next level is at the mercy of the depth of your yieldedness. You are praying, I desire to be like Pastor Nath. This is a way. This is a way of power. This is a way of glory. There is a relationship between death and glory. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. He said the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. There is a relationship between death and glory. Jesus name in Jesus name I want you to enter a covenant with your destiny that no matter how God lifts you no matter how God lifts you you will never break the consecration of his presence cancel any meeting and stay in his presence you are not a fool if you do that his presence that anything that distracts you away from placing value value on Jesus value on his presence money ministry open doors anointing when he dies then you are ready for another level of glory I tell you there is no power anybody can wish you good or evil once you stay in his presence it is a place of immunity it is a place of grace and it is a place of power let me pray for someone before you sit in the name of Jesus. Now listen, please. Listen. Listen. I'll make the altar call hopefully when I'm done. But I just sense strong in my heart. For someone, you are not even saved though. Honestly. And it's not like you've not had the gospel preached. You go for programs. You go for programs. You hear an altar call. But to you, it's none of your business. And for others, you are saved. But honestly, you between you and God, you cannot say you are serious with God. And you are not interested in being serious. I propose to you a greater hunger for God. The value of loving Him more than anything else. The, I don't condemn you. But I'm telling you, I have found, oh, I have found, I have found, that when men love Him, the secret to the many things we seek is found in his presence if you passionately seek him he says that you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart you will look for money oh, and money will run away but in his presence it will come and meet you there by wisdom you will look for fame all the value will be there but you'll be surprised a generation will not pay attention to you but when you leave them and stay with him he will announce you right from that secret place and they will gravitate their attention from anywhere across the globe and come and meet you at the cross. I pray for you because God is in the business of taking you as a church and taking you as a people from glory to glory. The requisite covenant, maintaining your consecration, the grace to make that happen, let it rest on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. Let's make progress. This is the first key. The first path that leads to greater glory is greater yieldedness, brokenness, and surrender. Number two, 
let me just run through the list and then we pray is God helping someone already the second key that controls the manifestation of ever increasing glory are you ready you want to walk in ever increasing dimensions of glory you need high level illumination high level spiritual illumination the ministry of light the dimension of God's glory you carry on your life and destiny is a direct product of the kind of light the quality of spiritual understanding that you have Proverbs 16 16 Proverbs 16 16 in addition to your consecration in addition to putting things right prioritizing his presence you need to contend for light here's what the Bible says how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather an understanding to be chosen rather than silver that means if gold and silver were kept here if wisdom and understanding were kept here the Bible recommends that you leave gold and silver as important and valuable as they are to our world and to pursue wisdom and understanding someone say light one more time you have to be passionate about spiritual understanding and continuous learning I found a scripture many years ago that delivered me from an arrival mentality first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 a very powerful and profound scripture never forget this scripture let's shout it together and then you write ready one to go and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know there is a standard in the spirit for every dimension of glory that must be manifest in your life it is governed by light the bible says in genesis chapter 1 that god made two great lights he made many lights but he made two great lights one to rule the day the greater to rule the day and the lesser he said to rule the night then he says he made the stars also your command of dominion and power in this kingdom I'm telling you it's a product of the truths of scripture that you know John 1 5 he says and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not there is nobody who emerges and walks in ever increasing glory in ignorance or at the level of yesterday's knowledge for someone God is calling you to upgrade to stretch your spiritual understanding are we together he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 you see the connection between light and glory arise and shine for your light has come the glory of god has always been there but it will never rise upon you until light comes the bible says and the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light there is a level of spiritual illumination that when you have you see let me tell you this your ministry your business your career your leadership will only rise and stop at the level of your spiritual understanding are we together now if you are a pastor you will only raise people to the limit of your understanding of spiritual things if you are a leader you are a businessman you cannot raise anything higher than your level of understanding hence the need to contend for light i am passionate about learning the things i do not know i am not embarrassed at all i don't pamper ignorance in my life the moment i'm aware that i do not know this or i do not know it to the degree to which i should know you see that now there are there are knowledge rituals that i practice every day there are books that I read. There are messages I listen to. They are across various aspects. Ministry, leadership, non-negotiable. It doesn't matter how tired I am. It's a covenant I bound myself with. You see, let me tell you the truth. When you want the world to celebrate God's hand upon your life, there must be an investment in light. You don't celebrate darkness. You celebrate light. Are we together now? The higher, the greater your light, the greater your competence. Fear is a product of ignorance. 
So sometimes there is a spirit of fear, but there is a condition of fear because there's too much gap. Once there's too much gap in knowledge, the courage to deliver is not there. Is that true? The person you call a consultant, many of you here are professionals in various areas, and if we were to arrange chairs right now and call you and say, come and speak to us, maybe in business or whatever, you will be very confident because you are a consultant. What made you a consultant is not the cloth you are wearing. Are we together? You took time to invest in knowledge. Hear me, my people. The Bible says, buy the truth. The truth is not free. You will buy it. You use the currency of humility. You use the currency of hunger. You use the currency of adaptation. Proverbs 18 and verse 1. True desire. A man having separated himself. Seeketh and intermeddleth with all knowledge. Light. For someone here. God wants to lift you. But the truth is that your limitation in knowledge. Is, is a cancer to your own growth. You have to use this conference to challenge yourself. Damage ignorance in your life. You don't need to know everything, but the, the knowledge that is connected to your destiny, the knowledge that is connected to your rising, press for it. Don't pamper yourself. Wake up and pray and press for knowledge. Someone say, I will buy the truth. Say it again. Say, I will buy the truth. There are two levels of truth you must buy. Number one, and ultimately, the truth that comes from scripture. Number two, the knowledge of the laws of life. You have to know both. The knowledge of the word of God, but you need the knowledge of the laws of life. And coincidentally, you find all in scripture. It's just the dynamics of their operation that differ. The knowledge of the Holy One, the knowledge of spiritual things. But in addition to that, if you want to see ever increasing glory in your life, I'm telling you, you need to have the knowledge of the ways of the universe the bible puts it beautifully in proverbs and um job chapter 38 and verse 33 it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven it says canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth nlt nlt please if you can find it he said do you know the laws of the universe and can you use them to regulate the earth your destinies are at the mercy of what you know with all due respect, you see the man of God, Pastor Nat, as much as you would not want to admit, this man you see is a compendium of very, very vast knowledge. As much as he's anointed, that trumpet you see, you try playing it, you see that there's light. It's not just anointing. I've never even tried to play the thing. As close as I am, I've never told him, please give me, let me blow the thing. I just convinced myself that every man should abide in his calling. Are we together? say light if you probe Pastor Nath right now and ask him you know the the genre of music and the kind the creativity that goes into the songs he's writing ladies and gentlemen it's not just inspiration inspiration is enhanced by knowledge the Holy Spirit makes use of the raw material of light within you to frame the answers the solutions that come Many of you are doing business, but the truth is that the level of knowledge you have has brought you thus far. The reason why you've marked time is because there's no knowledge to take you again further. This is true for ministry. Are we together? This is true for destiny. High level spiritual illumination. Say in the name of Jesus. I contend for light. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I contend for light. So everyone here, you must bound Bind yourself with a covenant under God that I'm not going to have any week pass where I don't learn something new, something pro destiny, something pro Jesus, something pro kingdom. You don't need to know everything, but ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you there is a relationship between ignorance and shame. Ignorance and shame are, are related. Hallelujah. I made a covenant with my destiny that I will only admire people, but I will never be intimidated. Anything I don't know, I will go and learn. It's not just amen. The amen must be backed up by diligence. I, Daniel, understood by books. I, Daniel, understood by books. I'm praying for you. Where ignorance has recycled shame around your life, in the name of Jesus, may my God, through knowledge, take away shame from your life forever. 
Hallelujah. When you see competence and the anointing, it's a beautiful sight to behold. When you see competence, I have the honor of speaking and leading prayer sometimes during the hallelujah challenge and many times when I get into the studio and I sit down I just watch those guys everybody doing his thing and you can see the level of competence and intelligence things you would take for granted the sound quality the intelligence the coordination etc these are the things that add up to produce the result you call hallelujah challenge so it's easy to cheapen the place of competence and just say it was just anointing it's just glory I reject ignorance in my life. I reject it. I'm praying for myself. Oh. I reject ignorance in my life. Listen. Our world today has too many people willing to help you if you are humble to learn. Five minutes in the presence of competence can damage years of mistakes. And you see, the thing about life is that life can teach you a lesson slowly for as long as you want to learn are we together now you can literally bring a season to an end through knowledge or through pride you can keep recycling that season like the hand of a clock and you keep going through pain many people today are stunted by simple things 10 minutes humility under structured mentorship can bring you out of this ah, I'm trying ministry is not working you are not the first to do it it's because they don't like me in Lagos. It's a lie. It's the obvious answer. It's your pain that gave you that answer. It's a wrong answer. The answer is that you do not know how to go to the city. It says the labor of the foolish. The foolish there is not an insult. It's the description of a kind of person. Bankrupt of knowledge. Weary at every one of them. Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Again, I'm praying for someone. For some of you, you are not where you should be by your prophetic calendar. You should be way ahead of that. But ignorance has kept you. Tonight, I plant within your spirit a passion for knowledge. A passion for wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Number three. The third key that is responsible for greater glory in the life of any man. Please do not forget these keys. These are irrefutable keys. Are you ready? Number three is called humility. Humility. You want to step into the greater glory? It will be at the instance of humility. Humility is very powerful. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 23. Let's hurry up. 29, 23 Proverbs. It says, a man's pride, any man, a man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Did you see that in the Bible? That honor can uphold the humble. Do you know it's difficult to criticize a humble person? Even if the person is in ignorance, the humility will shield you. But usually, pride is an enhancer to persecution. Pride. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. If you are learning, say amen. First Peter 5 and verse 6. Let's shout it together. Don't be tired. One to go. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. One more time. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. That's a secret. When you find people who never go down, it is because they have found a way of humility. Let me tell you this. Humility may sting your ego for a while, but I tell you there will be no end to your rising. Humility, profoundly powerful. That was the secret. I hope you know that when Jesus walked upon the earth, he came as the word incarnate. He was already the word, but by humility he was exalted and given a name. By humility. By humility. And the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Philippians 2 from verse 5 to 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He shows you the way of humility and the corresponding exaltation. I can tell you there is always exaltation for the humble. What does it mean to be humble so you are not confused? To be humble and to be simple are two different things. You can be simple and proud. 
Hallelujah. Just because you don't use an expensive phone does not mean you are humble. No. That is simplicity, not humility. Are we together? Let me tell you what humility is. Humility is a state. A state where you perpetually acknowledge that outside of the help of God, you will not be able to attain whatever result that you have. It's a recognition that has an energy. It speaks that when people see you, though you are confident, are we together? You stand confident in what God has done in your life. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done. Philemon 1 verse 6 says that the communication of your faith, are we together, might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. If God has made you the head, if you say I am the head, it's not pride. No, it's not pride. Are we together now? No matter how humble you want me to be, there are confessions I will never make. It's not humility, it's destruction. I won't program myself to death. However, I can stand before you and say the God of heaven is the reason why I am what I am. Paul puts it beautifully, by the grace of God. But he says, this grace was not showered on me that I labored more than ye all. And then he backs it up again and says, truly is the grace of God. Are we together now? Humility, acknowledging God that as the world claps for you and makes it look as if your success is a fabrication of your own creativity, you are quick to tell them, it is true that I partnered with the grace of God, but I can tell you that I am what I am by the grace of God. Someone say that after me. I am what I am by the grace of God. One more time. That is the character of humility. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Paul puts it beautifully. He says, I can do all things. Arrogant statement. But then he says, through Christ. If he had stopped, we we'll say, Abba, Paul, you can do all things. But he says, through Christ. You see, once you bring Jesus into the equation, you are safe. But once you keep him out, it becomes pride. It is true that God has lifted you, you are lifted. No matter how humble you are lifted. If you are rich, you are rich. Are we together? If you are poor, you can be rich, you know. But if you are rich, you are rich. If you are blessed, you are blessed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Period. If God has helped you, he has helped you. It's not a lie. Are we together? If God has lifted you, he has lifted you. However, you point men to him. You use that and point men to him. Personal puts it beautifully. He says, when you are done, take the glory. I am satisfied to just see you glorify that 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 is one of the most concise capture of humility let me tell you this i learned early in life that pride is a killer you see the anointing does not fight god the anointing only fights what is against god and when god is opposing you the only prayer that can save you is the prayer of mercy have you ever seen god fight a man it's not a good sight to behold. God fights so He's a warrior. Mm, he is. He's not stopped being a warrior. Maybe he has stopped in your life, but God is still a warrior. I tell you, the Bible said, let God arise. Let God, arise. let God, and let all his enemies. And like I will always observe, I hope you are not one of them. An enemy of God is not just somebody you don't like. That's not God's enemy. An enemy of God is anybody who becomes a perpetual interruption to the manifestation of his will. Even if you are Jonah. Are we together now? So God can anoint you to be a prophet as Jonah, but because you disobey the instruction, you become his enemy at that time. Not enemy in terms of him hating you. You become antagonistic to his will. And you bring yourself to a position where judgment has to be meted out on you. I'm praying for someone here, the cancer of pride. Now listen, we have a lot of pride though in Africa. I must tell you sincerely, because of our background. You know our language in Nigeria? Who do you, you don't know who I am. Are we together? Everybody is a big man in Christ, yes. Are we together? The obsession to show that you have made it. The obsession to show that you have arrived is unnecessary. One thing I've learned about success is that no matter how modest you are, if it's true success, it speaks. 
if you have to help success speak then you are not successful are we together now it's like telling somebody do you know that social person is rich i'm telling you it doesn't matter have you seen very wealthy people just wear sometimes you go to dubai and see them they just wear whatever the man is rich is rich it doesn't matter what you think he's not the one suffering are we together now i'm just i'm just saying that to show you the character of humility i'm praying for you and i'm serious about this i'm praying for you the spirit of pride has destroyed many in ministry destroyed many in business destroyed many in destiny some of you watch your parents go down because of pride you have seen it eat up people from preachers to businessmen to family people the malleability to learn the malleability to acknowledge God most people do not have and some of you here in all fairness to you and sincerely so this is the one problem you have in your life you're a good person but this issue of pride I pray for you now let this be the conference that kills pride finally in your life in the name of Jesus Christ may God grant you the grace to truly be humble in the name of Jesus can I give you two more number four the fourth key that becomes for us a compass leading us to greater glory ever increasing glory are you ready you want to walk in a greater level of the anointing you must contend for greater kingdom service greater kingdom service the greater your service in the kingdom the greater the glory upon you i can tell you this service is a very deep mystery that few people understand the more you serve god sincerely the more he adorns you with his glory you are a member of the oasis let me give you a kind counsel make sure that you don't just come and warm benches and come on sunday and say well for me I'm, I'm not I'm not the type that really wants to walk service is a mystery and you are governed by your love for Jesus that is the first motivation but number two it is a mystery that lifts men mysteriously I don't know anyone who started ministry by starting ministry anyone who started ministry correctly started ministry by service am I right on that Anybody who has not served before and is leading will most likely be a dangerous person. Not because the person is evil. There is something service teaches you that if you do not go through the gate of service, are we together now? I'm not talking of transactional service. Service that was born out of sincere love for God and seeing it as a privilege to be part of God's program. Everybody say service. The Bible says it is a worker who is worthy of his wages, not one who just comes to church. A worker. When you plunge yourself in God's payroll, that you make yourself a worker. I am a worker in the house of God, a worker in the vineyard of God. I work because I love him. I work because it's a privilege, it's an honor for me to do what I do. But I do that knowing that there is a covenant of service that you will serve the Lord and he will bless your bread, he will bless your water, he will take sickness away from you and that the fullness of your days you will fulfill. Are we together now? Can you show the difference between your salary and the blessing that came from service? Do you know the difference? Hallelujah. Everybody say service. There are very few people who are really serving God. Many come to church but there are few who are in service. How many of you have gone to use a restroom and you see a, uh, a notice out of service? That means you have no business standing there. It does not become desirable because it is out of service. Or an ATM that says out of service. Some of us, our lives are like that. When favor comes, it meets you out of service service when destiny helpers come they meet you out of because they were only instructed to come to those who are in service so you receive a prophetic word and favor comes and finds you out of service lifting out of service you are too big to serve so favor says no i was designed to only come to those who can serve who is learning 
please serve in the house of God. And, and this is not some manipulation. Serve. There are many benefits of service. Aside from the spiritual benefit, it teaches you discipline. It helps you to expose your gifts. There are many people today who did not even know they were called. They started serving. It was while they were serving, they began to discern the grace of God. Oh, lead prayer for five minutes. Ah, it looks like there's a grace on you, sister. There's a grace on you, brother. Service is very powerful. It makes you accountable. It helps you to be disciplined. It creates a routine of discipline that makes for greatness. Hallelujah. Service is very powerful. I'm praying for you. Everything God sent to you that did not find you in service and went back, by mercy may it return to you now. Shout a believer's amen. How do you know those who are in service? Those who love God and are not strangers to his presence. How do you know those who are in service? Those who are actively part of God's soul winning agenda. If you are not an active soul winner, you are not in service. My brother, you can be in church because God desires that all men, all men be saved and that they come unto the knowledge of the truth. If you are not actively participating in the transformation of men, do you know that you came and sat here, I saw crowds of people, you know, outside. Imagine the gentlemen who worked to make this happen. You see that now? Do you know the Bible says a laborer is worthy, deserving of his wages? It's not something you pray about. If it is true that you are a laborer, you are a worker in the house of God, there is an allocation for you. And in case you have not been receiving your own, this is the conference that there will be a back date. You know how they do arrears. I'm praying for you. If you have been a faithful worker under this ministry, under this grace, and it looks like your reward has not come, I agree with the grace in the house and I speak to you. Speedily may your reward manifest. Everybody say service. Yes, sir. The day you become too big to serve God or too big to serve in the house of God, an end comes to your rising. Truly, the glory of God rests upon people who desire to serve and who remain at the place of service. Hallelujah. The hymn writer says, I'll be a true soldier. He says, I'll die at my post. At my post. Not outside of my post. Let me give you the final one and then we'll pray. So number one, the first key that leads a man to greater glory is your yieldedness, your brokenness, your surrender. Number two, light, high level illumination your passion to learn and to grow the more. Number three, humility. Number four, greater kingdom service. Are you ready for number five? The fifth key, and I'll stop here tonight, that controls the manifestation of greater glory is consistent thanksgiving. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19, consistent thanksgiving. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving watch this and the voice of them that make merry and i will multiply them as a result and they shall not be few shout amen, amen. and i will also glorify them amen. my god this statement is very powerful but so not you can be multiplied and not glorified it's a burden when numbers don't carry glory it is a burden it's like having 10 children and none of them is great. That is multiplication, but there is no glory. And so he said, when you begin to thank God, you receive both multiplication. For some of you, you have multiplication, but it became a burden because there's no glory connected to it. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. Are we together? And I will multiply them and they shall not be few because they have chosen to thank me. When you thank him with five loaves and two fish, you will feed 5,000 people with it. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. So when a man is small, what does he need? Truly, he needs God to glorify him. When the glory is upon you, you cannot be small. That weight 
it makes you expensive it adds your worth it spreads you are we together thanksgiving father thank you you have done this to me thank you thank you you took the overseas from your side to this place and within a short time you have shown our pastor land thank you we do not take your your your, your faithfulness for granted thank you I'm staying in a rented apartment, but Lord, I thank you. I will lock my door and dance in that rented apartment. I may not have all the food to eat, but I'm grateful, oh God. I don't have school fees for all my four children, but I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I'm grateful. Listen. We live in a world where there is always an obsession for more. Our eyes always see what God has not done and what he's not doing. And we forget. There were 10 lepers. They came to Jesus. Jesus looked at them and said, go and show yourself to the priest. Your Bible says, as they went, a miracle happened. And all of them were running. But one said, no, no, I didn't deserve this. This came as a result of his kindness. He went back. Jesus was passing, but he remained there. When the man came and said, Sir, I just came to say thank you. Hear what Jesus said. Were there not ten of you? Were there not ten of you? You see, one key to thanksgiving is to remember. Thanksgiving is highly memory dependent. If you forget the goodness of God, it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Help me, Oasis, and forget not. Something happens to men when they forget the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. For someone, the truth is that God has been good to you this year. Although you don't have a job, you never beg from January till November. How the rent came, you cannot explain. How God lifted you, how God helped you. There are those you graduated this year. And I'm not just playing with words. The psalmist said, I lay me down. You know how many people died because they slept? There are people who died because they went to bed. And they never woke up. Let me say this with all due respect. Christians, when we go through turbulent times, the Bible teaches us to give thanks in all things. Don't get it. When, go and read your Bible and see what happened when people murmured before God. I can tell you God hates murmuring. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm human and I know that sometimes life can do its thing on you and press you. But you must learn to look away from what you think God has not done. To say, Lord, thank you. I count my blessings. I name them one by one. Are we together? I've not been lifted yet, but Lord, you gave me a great voice. I want to say thank you. I don't have a child yet, but thank you for giving me a good husband. I have three children. I'm still sourcing for their school fees. But thank God that there are children who can wake up in the morning and pray with their parents. There are parents who give birth and they don't know where the first born is. They don't know where the second born is. They know the third born is in prison somewhere. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Shout it again. Say, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 92, 1 to 4. Psalm 92, we're going to pray. Something is going to rest on somebody's head today. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High. Verse 2, to show forth your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Verse 3, upon an instrument of 10 strings hold on if you don't have 10 strings use 10 fingers 10 fingers are we together thank you and upon the psaltery upon the harp with a solemn sound verse 4 it says for thou O lord has made me glad through your walk I will triumph in the work of your hands. Jump to verse 10, please, media. 10. It says, because I have now given thanks, but my horn. Most times we quote that scripture and forget how the Bible started it. 
it was the context of thanksgiving acknowledging God's faithfulness this is the result that my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn look up you know what a unicorn is a unicorn's horn never faces down even if the head is down no the horn was designed that even if the head is down the horn is still up it says like the unicorn you will exalt my it doesn't matter storms can come rain can come but my horn shall thou exalt you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you are my glory the lifter up of my head my glory, the lifter up of my head. Let's finish that scripture. I shall be anointed on the wings of thanksgiving with fresh oil. We are reading to verse 14 quickly, verse 11. It says, my eyes shall also see my desire on my enemies. There are certain battles you will not need to fight when you are thankful, when you are grateful. Are we together? And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. Verse 13. It says the righteous who is thankful. The righteous who is thankful. The righteous who is thankful shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Then it says those people that be planted in the house of God. They shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 4, verse 14. They shall still, I like this, I like this. After 30 years, you are still relevant. 30 years, you are still standing. 30 years, ministry is still rising. They shall still bring forth fruit. In old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Lay your hands on your head. Say, Father, I decree and I declare fresh oil fresh grace upon my destiny open your mouth and pray fresh oil fresh grace upon your destiny because you have been thankful you have acknowledged him Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We're almost rounding up. I'm going to give you two minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before God and tell him thank you from January till now. But my words are not enough My vocabularies will fail Permit me to cry out Iba oh Iba oh Iba Iba oh Iba Iba oh Go ahead and say thank you. Don't just say thank you generally. Lord, you delivered me from accident. Thank you. They diagnosed me with a condition that you have healed miraculously. This was the year you terminated barrenness. Thank you. Thank you. You anointed me this year. Thank you. You gave me visibility this year. Thank you. You didn't allow the desires of my enemies come upon me. Someone pray. You lost the job, but thank him that you are still alive. You lost your father, your sibling. Thank him. Ibaoh, 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you. Thank you for life. Thank you for help. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for influence. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindnesses. Blessed are thou. Someone say thank you. Thank him for your children. Mention their name. Thank him for your business. Thank him for your job. Immaculately beautiful. I can go on and on. 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 On Praise the name of the Lord. Now please listen. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. I'm going to ask Pastor Nat to just blow the trumpet and I'll give you an instruction. Please listen. This sound you are hearing is a sound of release. It's a sound of jubilee. Please listen. Are we together? There are many of you truly I hope you know that trumpets, even in ancient times, they did not just announce seasons, they announced triumph. When people won and they were returning back, they were trumpets and dancing. So as he blows that trumpet, you are going to be praying over your destiny. Father, glory, greater glory, greater results, and that everything, witchcraft, manipulations of darkness, every patterns you saw it in your father you saw it in your mother this is a very deep mystery we're not wasting your time here if you really came to receive i'd like you to pray that lord upon the wings of this sound this is my triumphant entry into a new season let the old season give way with its pain its disappointment are you ready now while he's playing as the spirit leads him don't keep quiet yours is to keep praying Keep praying, Lord, by the sound of the shofar. I can't remain in this season again. This season of poverty. This season of pain. It looks like doors will open and then I return back again. I ride upon the wings of this prophetic sound. Outside, are you praying? Someone is praying. Doors are opening in ministry. Doors are opening in your destiny. Marital doors. Doors of fruitfulness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone pray. Your triumphant entry. Your triumphant entry. Your triumphant entry. This is a sound of release. A sound of release. For someone, it's a sound of speed. For someone, it's a sound of restoration. For someone, it's a sound of advancement. A sound of advancement. You are going forward. Come to an end. We announce a new season. We are now Rakata Kete Bereketa. Rakata Brate Keparato Kete. Ebre Kete Kete Bereketo. We announce a new season. Oasis, step into a new season. Believers, step into a new season. A new season in ministry. A new season in your business. A new Sabate Kete Keta. The Lord is anointing people. Grace is arresting on 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 people. For the next season. The next season of influence. The next season of power. The next season of relevance. Take a minute and pray. You are worried with problems.
prophecy. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end. An end to shame. An end to disappointment. An end to stagnation. An end to spontaneous spiritual. Hear me. We're wrapping up, but I want you to listen to me. We're in a very prophetic atmosphere. I'm hearing in my spirit beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, hear me, please. We're still going to pray. I'd like you to pray. Don't be silent. There are times that spirits challenge the manifestation of the glory of God in your life honestly it is true there are altars there are demonic things I'm going to cry again that as the man of God sounds his trumpet I like you to challenge it that everything that is not of God every mountain and every altar I, I, it has it has become a blockade but that in the name of Jesus be lifted up and cast into the sea it's time for me to go it's time to go help her it's time to go it's time to go open your mouth and pray pray challenge every altar every satanic hole oh yes let the lord arise challenge every altar every manipulation of darkness over your destiny Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. I go forward. I go forward. Greater glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Pray. Glory to glory. In my destiny, glory to glory, I can't end like this. I am a child of God, glory to glory. I war with prophecy, I war with prophecy, I war with prophecy. Hallelujah. Just help those under the anointing. I want to speak over your life. Please receive it. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what you saw in the life of your parents. That you are now seeing it reproduce itself in your life. That they go forward and they go back. They want to make a pacos katebata. They want to make progress and something ties them. I decree and declare. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is under any yoke of captivity be released now be released now help them be released now be released now be released now he said he said tell Pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me I'm saying it again it may have tied you for 10 years tied you for 15 years nothing is working in your life tonight we prophesy over you go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in Lagos go forward in London go forward in UK go forward in US go forward I prophesy go forward in your business go forward in ministry go forward
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're wrapping up. Listen. The Bible says it was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. They didn't just go forward. It was the Lord that advanced them. It's God that moves people to another level. Some of you here, listen. I'm telling you this by prophecy. Write it down. The season you are in ended scenes in the spirit. But you've not been able to move to a new season. Because the door that should open for you, doors stand for access. Your kitchen is separated by your bathroom through walls and doors. And when that door is not open, there is no motion. I don't know whose door has been closed here. I stand in faith with Pastor Nat. Honestly, I see doors opening in the spirit. Truly, this is what I see. Doors, doors, financial doors, doors, doors of fruitfulness. I decree and declare, doors open, 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 by the power of God. Be open, business doors, ministry doors, doors of influence. Be open, be open, be open. Hallelujah. Now hear me. Please hear me. Not to sound arrogant, but you are watching a man here who God has lifted and given global visibility. There is no nation of the world he goes to where he's a stranger. God has honored him. When God personifies his possibilities in men, it is so that we can see and believe. Are we together now? Please listen. People do not rise by luck. Learn this. It is the grace that is on your head that determines whether you will rise or you will remain there. It's going to blow one more time. This one is the grace for greatness. Listen, listen, listen. It says, thou shall increase my greatness, my greatness, my greatness, my greatness, and comfort me on every side. You should not be a part of this vision and not draw that grace. For some of you, it is familiarity. Familiarity is a grace killer. Are we together now? In Nigeria, we call it see it all or something like that. See, so, see, see. Are we together? Yes, sir. Don't be crying over something God has brought close to you. Listen, there are some of you here, just, and, and, and uh, please don't feel bad, I'm not trying to insult you. Even to stamp a visa on your passport, you have prayed, you have fasted, every time it has been no. You need a grace on your head for God's sake. Are we together now? If life is hard for you, don't, don't, Give excuses around it. Be angry in your spirit. You will never be able to serve God if all you are thinking about is making ends meet. As he prays this prayer, because the borders of the earth open for him, it's about to open for someone. Maybe not for everybody, but for someone who came with humility of heart to receive. Some of you will be surprised. As he blows this trumpet, don't just look at your pastor. See a man helped by God. A man that God has shown mercy. A man that God lifted. A man that God crumbled barriers. Is someone ready to receive? While he's blowing it, mention the areas in your life you want to see God walk. If it's to take you out to open doors, Lord, you have placed grace. Your possibilities are before us within the body. Let my life not suffer and drag like this. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, sir. Anointing is coming on you. You are receiving doors opening, gates opening, mantles resting on you. For someone, you are receiving the key that gives you access to nations, access to nations, access to nations, access to the hearts of kings, access to the hearts of the great. Access to the 
take it, take it, take it. One minute, one blessing. Lord, I receive. Thou shalt increase my greatness from glory to glory. Tired of this level, tired of this face, tired of this realm. Hallelujah. He has never gone to any nation where he was rejected. I pray for you. As the shepherd God has placed over you, this grace God gave him that has given him global acceptance. I'm praying for someone. For the first time, some will be receiving. Even though you have been here, may that mantle right now as I speak, let it rest on you. 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 Beyond borders, let it rest on you. Beyond cultures, let it rest on you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, you have seen freshness in his life. There is no year that God does not churn out songs, prophetic songs. Just when you think you have heard one, then another one comes. The first time I heard this song, this Thanksgiving song, that Baba song, it was after Hallelujah Challenge. Now that I've come here, I'll make sure I learn that song. They sang it that day, but they didn't teach me. Today I must learn it. After my prayer, praise the Lord. Creativity. After the order of Bezalel, that from your spirit man, there are things that need to be drawn out. I pray for you. As God has placed upon his life, in the name of Jesus, for someone, I speak to you, new things, new things, new things from your spirit new things great things coming from your spirit i say it again new things from your spirit in the name of jesus final prayer final prayer can i pray over your finances you can never talk about glory no matter how modest you sound and bypass economic empowerment are we together the Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Nor the rich man glory in his riches. There is glory in riches. Are we together? Nor the mighty man or the strong man glory in his might. But let him that glory at verse 24, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Wisdom has glory. Riches has glory. Might has glory. Are we together? I want to pray for you. I'm very vocal about praying for the finances of people. Let me tell you the truth. This is our contribution. And while there are laws that can empower people, laws that can help people, diligence, relationships, competence, value, and all of that, there is a prophetic advantage we have in the body. Are we together now? It is true. God can help men. God can empower men. I always will tell my people at home that I have tea and bread in my house and it is a consolation to my serving God. I don't serve God because of tea and bread, but I am grateful that I can finish preaching and go back home right. and there is tea and bread. Am I right? That's right? So if there's tea and bread on my table, I must be a wicked person to not pray that God will place the same on your table too. Hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. Every time you see Israel going to Egypt, even though they know it will later be a place of slavery, hunger, Genesis 42, 1 and 2, that even a prophet who is hungry will die. He says, get it down, verse 2, and buy for us so that we may live. 
and not die. That's how they got into that place until they rose another Pharaoh who knew no Joseph and they became slaves. If you're not interested, no problem. You have received the others. But I'm praying for someone here, especially those who have tried. I'm not praying for lazy people. The prayer for lazy people is that God will help you to not be lazy. Are we together? Yes, yeah, so that's your prayer. You have received it by faith. But I'm praying for people who are diligent, but mysteriously, you are seeing that there is a factor. This thing is not working. Do you know? I have learned that the sentiments of men corrupt the potency of principles it's true that principles should be irrefutable for instance the principle of justice and diligence a diligent hand should be made fat but i can sit down and say you are not my tribesman and even though you are diligent i will not promote you mm. are you seeing that yes, my sentiment yes. has corrupted the potency of that principle yes, this is where you need the help of Come god on. Come on. in Come the on. life of many people that equation is not balanced and it's not because it is a diligence problem. It is that you are living with men whose hearts, some of them, their hearts have been seared with hot iron. They will say, for as long as I'm alive, you will not be promoted in this place of work. There are some of us, your financial failure today is as a result of inherited battles. Someone fought with your father and found out you carried the son name and you inherited battles you know nothing about. Let me pray for someone. In the name of Jesus. And by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Oasis and all the believers who have come here. I pray for you. There is a grace that helps men to prosper. I decree and declare. May that grace right now rest upon you. Rest upon your business. Rest upon you. Rest upon your business. Rest upon you. Rest upon your business. Upon your business. In the name of Jesus. I forbid you from begging. I forbid you from begging. The Lord will supply your needs and you will serve him with integrity. In the name of Jesus. Listen, may the Lord so bless you that the temptation of compromise does not work in your life. Did you hear what I said? May my God so bless you that the temptation to compromise that it will not work in your life wave your hands and give Jesus praise wave your hands hallelujah now I'm about to make the altar call but please allow me to lend my voice with Pastor Nat. tomorrow I want you to invite everybody I know there's no space even if it's to sit on the roof no problem Provided they can hear. Are we together? And don't be careless in inviting people. There are people you know. Honestly, they need the hand of God. There's no glory in their lives. We're going to have the time to pray and minister to people tomorrow by the mercies of God. I want you to invite everyone. I'm sure that the details will come when they come up. Make sure that you come with your heart hungry and ready to receive. Praise the name of the Lord. One more minute and we're done. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Please lend me your attention. Let's minimize movement. You are in here. You're outside all of the overflows and you're saying, Apostle, Pastor Nat, while I heard you minister, the Holy Spirit began to convict me, telling me that I need Jesus and I need to make my ways right. I want to give you an opportunity for someone who has never made this decision and you are saying apostle pastor nat please do not end tonight's program without giving me this opportunity or for another person you are saying i want to rededicate my life i want to take jesus seriously wherever you are we're out of time i'm going to count one to five i want to see the first bold person leaving his seat her seat I want you to come and stand in front of me here. I want to pray for you sincerely. I'm not sure that there may be room for those who will be coming from outside. But I want someone sincere. I see a gentleman coming. Let's celebrate him. God bless you. Come. I count one to five. Come. Oasis, is this how you celebrate salvation? God bless you. Come. Oh, I love you. Please start. Please start. Completely, oh, oh, I love you. I three, you 
Is someone still coming? I love you with everything we have. Oh, for you, you love me, you love me. Oh, Run to Jesus. God bless you. Completely, God bless you. He's able to give you a new beginning. God bless you. You love me, you love me, you love me, you love me. We every you love me, you love me, everything we every hallelujah. Let's celebrate these ones for the courage. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you. Thank you for yielding to this call. Thank you. This is what this is all about. Connecting you to the lover of your soul. Let me have your attention. I want to speak to those online. You're watching from across the globe. Watching online. You're part of our online family. Watching this conference. We're about to receive those who really need Jesus. The Bible says as many as will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Perhaps you are watching from your home, a couch, your device, or perhaps a rebroadcast. And you are saying, Apostle, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how my life has been. Even now, he's able to give you new life. He's able to give you a new beginning. So as I lead this, my dear brothers and sisters, in this prayer, I want you to join them. That includes those who are outside and um particularly those who are online i want you to join this prayer no assumption if you are not sure whether or not you are saved then you are not saved i want you to join in this prayer god bless you you can have the assurance of salvation god bless you god bless you hallelujah now all of you in front those at the overflows and those online please let me request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and say this after me say it loud and say it clear say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Some of them are in tears, acknowledging your love over them. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name, based on your confession of faith and the integrity of God's word, we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the grace to live the victorious Christian life is hereby released upon your spirit. And you go from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' name, we pray. So all of you in front, please, I'd like you to rise and let me request that you look to my right. There's a lady waving her hands. Please, I'd like you to just gently walk with them. They will have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. Hallelujah. And then for those of you who made that decision online, um, you're going to see a QR, a barcode. Please make sure you scan it and fill the details. Let us know that you received Jesus and there'll be a committee to follow up with you. See you tomorrow. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. His glory is just over me. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands. I sense his glory. Lift your hands.
for the Lord is a sun and shield. For the Lord gives grace and glory. No good things will he withhold from them that walk it uprightly. For you are glorious. There's glory. I know that I can sense it. Lift your hands wide. We sing glory to your name. Choir, lift your hands. New glory. New glory, Father. Lift your hands. For every music minister in the house, every psalmist, glory. Let that wait. Let that wait that came on me. Let that wait. Let that wait come. Let that wait for. Amen. Amen. Now, please, can you stretch forth your hands to this gift, this grace? For over two hours has poured. For every preacher that speaks in this conference, we're going to bless them. Open your mouth and just... Please open your mouth and... He that watereth shall be watered. Joshua Selman, we thank you, oh. we thank you, oh. we thank you. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. 
But what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.